Hello guys and welcome to this week's Penny Podcast. I'm Andres Pear, I'm in 11th grade and I'm the Capo Student Media Web Producer. I'm Neha Desiraju, I'm in 10th grade and I'm a staff writer on The Sidekick. The Penny Podcast is a weekly hybrid podcast that incorporates elements of interview and conversation with rotating hosts. Our Capo Student Media highlight comes from Anthony Cesario for his article headlined 15 Years Since Friends, Top 10 Episodes to Celebrate Finale's Anniversary, published under our entertainment section. Cesario opens his article by stating that May 6th was the 15th anniversary of the final episode of Friends. Still, Monica, Rachel, Phoebe, Chandler, Joey, and Ross remain present and influential in pop culture. From CHS students and teachers to people around the world, Friends is a timeless favorite of many. Moving away from TV shows, let's talk about some music. On May 17th, Injury Reserve is set to release its self-titled debut record on the Loma Vista recordings. After three mixtapes and two EPs, the hip-hop trio were formally introduced themselves to the world. That same day, Tyler the Creator will be dropping his fifth studio album, Igor, under Columbia Records. As his fanbase has noted, the teasers for the record showcase sounds that predate 2017's Flower Boy and draw influences from his earlier work. With all the great music coming out this Friday, it'll be hard to focus on it all. So instead, let's focus on our accomplished guest for this episode. Please introduce yourself. My name is Kevin Nevels. I'm a citizen of Coppell, Texas. I'm, a, uh, I'm the owner and chief instructor of Coppell Taekwondo Academy. How long have you been living in Coppell? Uh, well, I originally moved to Coppell in 1997 with my parents. Uh, so my first run, I, I was here from 97 to 2003 uh, when I went to University of North Texas. And then I moved back to Coppell uh, with my wife and my two kids in 2015. How has the community shaped you as a person, both professionally and as a parent? Uh, to be really honest, this community it really changed my life and um, I'll kind of give you a little background so I, I was actually born in Vicksburg Mississippi and uh, in that community uh, you know it, it was a it was a nice community there were some good people there but uh, did not have a lot of the advantages that Coppell has so the fact that we were able to move here and I was able to get my education at Coppell High School uh, was a huge improvement of where I, I would have been if I would have stayed there. So uh, hats off to my parents for making the decision to uh, move us here. I really think that gave me a head start. Uh, from there, uh, I actually spent two years at North Lake Community College. And then from there, I went to study radio, television, and film at the University of North Texas as I was a big part of uh, KCBY when I was at Coppell High School. So that was a, a big influence in my life. Um, now, uh, I, I know some people are th thinking, you know, you just introduced yourself as the owner and chief instructor of Coppell Taekwondo Academy, and uh, I've got a radio, television, and film degree. So I actually worked in that industry for a little bit, uh, but decided that um, you know, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, we, we wanted to get married and we wanted to start a family. And, uh, you know, we decided that uh, just wasn't going to be able to work in that industry because uh, you got to grind for a little while. Uh, yeah. So uh, we shifted, uh, I shifted out of, out of that industry. I actually worked for my father for a little while, and then... Um, after figuring out that I did not like the industry that my father worked in, uh, I decided I want to go out my own, uh, become an entrepreneur, and open up my uh, own business. So the fact that I actually get to come, uh, you know, be a part of the uh, Coppell community and hopefully shape young people in a positive way, it's really, really important to me because of the experiences that I had here. Coppell was an amazing place, as I said earlier, to uh, to grow up and, and get an education. And I met amazing friends that I still talk to. I, I play with, uh, I play hockey with uh, two of my old high school friends uh, on a weekly basis. So uh, it, it's important for me to be a part of this community and, and, uh, and give back where I can. What industry did your father work in or does he work in? Uh, so he actually worked in the petroleum industry. So uh, I was actually working um, uh, for my father's company and I did quality control and gasoline and diesel. So uh, I'm kind of an outgoing person. I, I, I love talking to people and, and, and having a good time. And the fact that I was stuck in a laboratory, basically sniffing gas and diesel fumes all day, uh, wasn't the, the most fulfilling career. Uh, it paid well, so that's good. So if you're looking for a good job, the petroleum industries, uh, it, it pays well, but it really wasn't um, fulfilling. You know, So I, I wanted to do something that not only made me feel good, but also uh, do, do something to affect positive change uh, in my community. So you talked about some of the advantages that uh, Coppell had over where you grew up. What are some of those? I think the, the number one uh, thing that jumps out to me is just the sense of community, the way that uh, you see how 
parents are so involved uh, you know, with, with uh, students and their education. Uh, the way that this community, uh, I mean, if you think about it, a lot of people move to this community for the school district. So the fact that people have education on the forefront of their mind, I, I think that, that that really lends itself to the atmosphere just in general. So, um, you know, I, I know a lot of people, you know, they, they talk about being such a, you know, having such high pressure on academics here at, at Coppell, but I think it offers so much more, uh, just the support system in general. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to know uh, most of the school board and uh, just knowing what's in their heart and what they try to do on a regular basis to try to make sure that Coppell is um, not only a good academic school, but uh, making sure that the students are well-rounded, where we, you talk about social and emotional development and health. I, I think that's really important. And to be honest, I don't think I would have gotten that if I would have stayed uh, at my, in my old town and gone to my old school. So uh, I'm really, really fortunate, I think, to be able to, to, to come to this community and, and experience some of these great things. And why is it important to stay active in your community? Um, I, I think I, I believe strongly in you know if people have given time and effort into you, I think that you should turn around and reciprocate that. So the fact that uh, if I have the ability to to get out in the community to you know to affect positive change to contribute in a meaningful way, I I, I think that's really important. I, and I don't know if you know I I don't know why I, you know, I feel that way. I think I'm just grateful uh, for the opportunities that I've had. Uh, I know uh, on my mother's side of the family, they've, they've been real, uh, you know, they've given a, a lot back. They've, you know, contributed to their community and, and they actually help better the community that I came from. But, you know, the, the fact that, that I'm here and now, um, you know, seeing my children go through uh, the school the school system, my daughter's going to be in fourth grade next year. My son's going to start kindergarten, both at Town Center Elementary. So, um, you know, I, I, I take a lot of my work and, and I think about them. I, I think about their peers. And I, I want this school district and this, uh, this city and just this community in general to be better off than, than I found it. So, you know, if, if everybody just gave back a little bit, I think we'd have uh, a lot of change. So I just try to get back where I can. Growth, right? Yeah, absolutely. What inspired you to start Kabu Taekwondo Academy? So uh, when I was young, uh, when I was living in Vicksburg, Mississippi, I uh, started taking martial arts. And uh, it was so different than anything I'd ever done before. I'd, I'd done team sports my whole life. I'd played a lot of baseball and done some soccer and, and you know, just, just played various sports. And uh, I had a buddy come talk, uh, talking about martial arts schools. Now, this is when, like, Ninja Tur the original Ninja Turtles was big, like, in the 80s and stuff. So I'm old now. It just is what it is. But uh, so, uh, you know, I love Ninja Turtles. Power Rangers was coming around. It was like, oh, man, this is, this is so cool watching all the kicking and punching. But when I got into the classes... I started to realize it was more than that. Uh, the fact that you know they talk about life skills and personal development, you know, and we talk about we talk so much about leadership and and uh, you know trying to uh, you know trying to be a better version of yourself. You know, every time you come to class, every time you step out in your community, you want to be a better version of yourself. Uh, I, I mean, that's that's very attractive to me. You know, I, I I and and I think it's important to to share that. So I think a lot of those things really drew me to doing this uh, full time because. For just a long time, I was just a student of the martial arts. I um, I was a little worried about making something that I loved into my job. You know, if you can imagine, uh, you know. So you know, it's it just, uh, you know, it, it was it was a, it was a reflection period in my life when I, I knew I needed to pivot away from working for my dad's company, and I was fortunate enough to have something that I could. Uh, I don't want to necessarily say fall back on, but something that I had in my life that that I could turn into a career and uh, could just be positive for people. Exactly. And what has establishing your own local business taught you, um, aside from you know the life skills that you learned from martial arts itself? Oh my gosh, um, the, the biggest thing I think from opening up a small business that I've learned is education is key. And um, I'll, I'll kind of elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, as I said earlier, I got my degree in radio, television, and film. I have no formal business training, so I did not understand a lot of the things that it takes. I, I, I didn't understand about you know what it takes to pay taxes or uh, you know certain requirements that the government has for setting up, up a company and stuff like that. So I've really had to kind of go back and, and learn those things. Uh, and not having any formal business training, uh, that can be a little difficult. So. Um, you know, it, it's simple as like learning things like what a balance sheet is and, and stuff like that, and and how your um, you know your financial health is like the lifeblood of your business. I didn't I didn't understand all that. What I did understand is that I had a passion for martial arts, and I knew that 
that passion, it, it would carry me to a point, but there, there became a point where I had to go and I had to go get some more education. So I actually wound up fi finding a mentor in the martial arts industry that was able to teach me a lot of things about business specific to running a martial arts school. And that's when our business actually took off and became more successful. Uh, but we always were, were passionate. We always had great customer service and good communication with our, you know, with our students and our families uh, that participate in our academy. But when we got that business training, um, that really helped us take our business and you know, the, the financial side of our business to the next level. So we were really fortunate to be able to find that. Who was your mentor? Uh, so it, uh, it's a gentleman of uh, the name Mike Metzger, uh, and he owns he co-owns uh, a chain of ten martial arts schools in the Orlando area. So oh. I actually met him at a conference in Las Vegas about five or six years ago. Uh, it's an annual conference that we go to. Uh, it's like a trade show and a continuing education event. It's called the Martial Arts Super Show. Uh, met him there. Um, you know, he spent about. 20 to 30 minutes talking to us you know, about where our business was and how he could help. And uh, uh, I know the term he's thrown around a lot, but it was an absolute game changer for our business. It, uh, uh, he really, really kind of took us under, the, our, our, uh, under his wing and educated us. And you know, what's great is he's, still, he's just a phone call away. I can call him and, and he's got a whole team and I can call anybody on his team if uh, he's not immediately available, but he always, you know, he's always there and he's always um, helping us whenever we come across a situation that we're not familiar with, which is, as time goes on, it's less and less, but it's always good to have somebody in your corner. Exactly. Just out of curiosity, what is the name of the martial arts school chain that he owns? Uh, Championship Martial Arts. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And without starting a business, what are some ways that Capo residents can be involved in programs and volunteering in the city? Wow, uh, you know, there are a ton of opportunities to volunteer in, in the city. And just speaking from the city side alone, uh, I know, uh, you know, there's, uh, we have the, the community gardens that, you know, that are, that are available for volunteering. We've got senior center that is available for volunteering. Um, a great thing that I've done is uh, something called leadership cop uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but it's the leadership training that the city actually puts on. They host it every year and uh, I applied and was accepted this year. And, um, it is absolutely amazing to learn about the different departments in the city and learn how you can actually contribute and give back, uh, some, some examples, um, uh, the fire, de uh, the fire department, and the police department, they have amazing opportunities for volunteerism. Um, the, the police department has the, uh, the leadership academies there. They have the, uh, uh, the leadership, uh, or the, the alumni group that they have, uh, where you can kind of go through and get police training and stuff. And they have the citizens on patrol program, which is really cool. So, uh, where you can, they actually have the cars that drive around and you can volunteer your time to drive around. You got to go through extensive training to do that. But, uh, you know, if you want to help na your, your neighborhood and your community be safer, you know, that's a great opportunity. Uh, I know the, the parks and rec department, they have tons of opportunities through their different channels uh, that they have uh, to be able to give back. Uh, so there, there are a lot of opportunities just from the city side. Uh, from the school district side, there's a lot as well. Um, I was fortunate enough last year to be accepted to Coppell ISD's leadership uh, academy called iLead, and that was great to learn about the district because, again, uh, from individual campuses on, on the elementary level to uh, volunteer opportunities through booster organizations at the secondary level, there are a, a ton of opportunities. So I think whatever your interest is, more than likely there's an opportunity to plug in. So I would recommend, um, you know, find out what you're passionate about and then you know, con just call the city and they can tell you where, where you can plug in and help out or at least get you to the right people that can help you with that. But uh, amazing staff and amazing sense of leadership and um, uh, just a, a vision of service throughout uh, both organizations. Uh, and meaning that uh, the city and the school district. So great opportunities there. So tell me about um, C CISD's iLEAD program and your role in it. So uh, last year I was accepted into the iLEAD program and uh, I tell you what, that, that, that program was absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the biggest things that I, that I took from that program was um, how important legislation is it's, it's kind of it's kind of weird but learning about the laws of, of the state of texas and how funding works and stuff like that really opened up my eyes to the bigger picture about you know how our tax dollars are used and and, 
and how uh, people in the school district are are advocating to try to keep more money uh, locally and so we can improve our schools and stuff. That was a that was probably the biggest eye eye opener. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, please research that, look into that because I, I think that's important. But um, from a volunteers volunteerism standpoint, uh, it was just really cool to kind of see what all the district is involved in. Um, look at some of the in innovations that have happened and then figure out a way for you to plug in. And one of the best ways is uh, the Coppell ISD Education Foundation. Um, that's actually one of the coolest ways. And um, I was actually really fortunate enough to be able to uh, partner up with two other Coppell uh, ISD alumni. Uh, and we're actually uh, trying to form an alumni group right now. So uh, we're not a full on association uh, yet, but um, it's myself, uh, Aaron Duncan, who is a former city council member, and Lee Walker, who is a uh, current uh, Coppell ISD school board member. Uh, we've partnered together uh, to try to uh, create a group so we can work on uh, continuing to network, to be able to uh, take profession professionals from Coppell, uh, who have graduated from Coppell ISD, plug them back in the community to hopefully be, maybe be an inspiration or, or uh, you know, have some guidance to some of the, the learners uh, to professional careers. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're kind of getting that off the ground and it's really only been and we've been working on it a little less than a year now on very small scale, but we've recently partnered with uh, the Education Foundation uh, for their run to fund. We actually had an alumni booth out there and uh, we're just trying to get awareness out and stuff. So they actually uh, had an alumni running category. So we're trying to partner with these other uh, district entities to be able to spread the word about the alumni group. So we're really excited about that though, but we know it's going to be a few more years of hard work before we really get some traction on <laughs> It, so to form it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, describe some of your favorite memories from Coppell or CHS. Oh man, that's a really, really good question. I, I think that some of my favorite memories are the people. Uh, you know, if you think about you know CHS, CHS is just a building, mm -hmm. but what makes what really makes a life experience are the people there. So, um, you know, I've, I, what's really cool is I, I'm actually still in contact with some of the teachers that are there. They, they've moved on to other careers and stuff, but um, it, it's really cool to be able to uh, just reach out to my old KCBY uh, teacher and, and uh, chat with her and uh, just kind of know she's there. Uh, the, the friends that I made uh, when I was at Coppell ISD, um, they've been such a huge part of my life. And they've uh, moved on. Uh, I've got a friend who's a, you know, he's a real estate, uh, a real estate agent. I've got a police officer uh, friend. I've got a friend who's a, a bankruptcy lawyer. I mean, people that have gone on to very, very successful careers, uh, and um, you know, just being able to share some of those memories with them. That's really what 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 made Coppell so special to me. Were uh, some of the amazing people that I met. Um, the education that I received there, I, I think, outweighs anything that I would have received at my, um, you know, where I where I lived before. And I don't, I, I don't say that to to you know, belittle the, you know in uh, Vicksburg where I came from, but I think it just it goes to show just how. I, I think how many resources we have here, uh, and I, I want people to realize that that uh, you know, Capel is a real special place, and uh, so. I'm very, very grateful and fortunate to be able to come uh, and graduate from here and, and be a part of this community. Speaking, looking towards the past and looking towards the future, how has Capo changed since you've lived and gone to school here? Wow. Uh, so when I first moved here, uh, Capel was about 25,000 people, I think, about what it was. So, you know, we've added 15,000 people to the city. And, and as you can imagine, you know, there's a little bit more congestion there was before, but just um, from additions to buildings, I, actually, you know, I, w I was here. I remember Tom Thumb wasn't even here when, when we came, and you know now it's that's all built out. Um, Coppell High School, uh, the current like band hall and choir room and stuff that didn't exist. Uh, the whole uh, the south wing of the school didn't exist when I uh, when I uh, started there. So it actually uh, opened up my senior year. So just being able to to see some of the growth has been really cool. Um, one thing that I, I think is is really cool is I, I think that the makeup of Coppell has changed uh, quite a bit. Just watching some of the diversity, you know, kind of come in. You know, we've seen a lot of our, our Asian Indian population move in, and um, I know when you know when I when I was going to school here, you didn't really see that. And uh, as the demographic as the demographics have changed, 
uh, I think it's been a great opportunity for learning and learning about other cultures and learning how our differences, our perceived differences are really actually a lot of similarities. Uh, the fact that people move to this town because they want better for their children, they want them to have a good education, that's common ground that we can all uh, find. And so I think it's important uh, you know, to acknowledge that, yeah, people come from different backgrounds, but we're all here for the same thing. We want to just better ourselves and better our children. And uh, I think that that's one thing that makes Coppell special. Uh, and unfortunately, I think some people don't see it like that. But I know for me personally, uh, it's been really, really cool to get some get to know people from different communities. And uh, it's a way for me to grow as an individual to make sure that, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that our martial arts school serves everyone. So. Uh, I think it's important for us to learn about other people and, and see how we can serve everybody in the community. Uh, so thinking years ahead, what changes do you hope to see in Coppell? Um, well, uh, funny that you mentioned that. So uh, I was actually a part of the, the Vision 2040 uh, initiative, and that's a really, really, it was a really cool thing that I, I was able to be a part of. I was actually on the executive committee, and uh, it was about a dozen or so of us um, uh, from the community that have had, had a history in like giving back and volunteering. And it was our job to kind of help create the vision of what Coppell is going to look like. And it's called 2040 because eventually the goal is by 2040, uh, you know, we will see a lot of the changes that we discussed in that plan take place. Uh, so uh, I, I think that one of the things that I personally would like to see is uh, w one of the pillars that came out of Vision 2040 uh, was the idea of Coppell embracing being a smart city. And so, you know, what the idea of technology uh, and, and how that'll that'll play a part in the development of Coppell. Uh, I think we're in a really cool position to where we've got some amazing partners on the west side of town with uh, you know some of our big businesses. You know we have four Amazon distribution centers over here. We've got um, uh, you know like Samsung centers and and, and things like I mean these big names that you hear uh, you know every day. Um, we've got strategic partnerships with them right now. If if we could. Um, you know, further develop those relationships to where Coppell could be on the leading edge of uh, technology, I think that would be a really cool uh, uh, thing. Now, one thing that's already come out uh, that, that you've seen is uh, Coppell has invested in smart water meters. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have heard about this or not, but uh, they're actually replacing all the water meters in the city. And uh, you're actually going to be able to create a, an account and you can monitor your water consumption. And so and I think that's a first step into embracing technology so we can look at consumption patterns, uh, we, we can collect that data, we can analyze it, and we can see maybe where we can make changes to, uh, you know, be smarter with our water supply because, you know, here in North Texas, uh, we have to be careful with our water supply. You know, we, we're on a, a limited amount. Now, it's been raining a lot lately, so we have a, you know, a good supply, but um, I think that's the first step. I, and I would love to see Coppell expand into uh, looking at maybe how we can uh, manage resources with our, uh, you know, with our uh, grid power and stuff and kind of see what kind of technological advances we can use into monitoring electricity use, uh, how we can, uh, you know, possibly tap into solar a little bit more and, and, and use that and just try to be on the forefront of technology. I, I think that would be a really, really cool thing uh, uh, for, uh, for Coppell to invest in. And I think, uh, you know, we saw the desire, and actually I think it has a lot to do with the demographic makeup. You know, a, a lot of our uh, Asian Indian population, they do work in the technology sector, so they're, they're young, they're nimble, they, they embrace technology, and I think that would be a really cool thing for us to see. Uh, and I, I know personally, I would, I would love to see that because, um, you know, I'm a big fan of, of like Internet of Thing devices and stuff in our homes and stuff. So uh, I would love to see Coppell embrace things like that and really, really um, become a leader in North Texas in that smart city category. Mm -hmm. So what would, um, so far, I don't know if you've planned a lot into this, but what would come out of these strategic partnerships with Samsung and Amazon that you were talking about? Well, uh, and, and again, it, it, part of our job was to kind of take a high level approach and, and look, and we were, really weren't down in the nitty gritty. We actually leave that to city council to kind of figure out. So go council on trying to figure all those things out. But, uh, you know, some ideas were thrown around like, uh, you know, uh, Amazon is testing, you know, driverless cars and things like that. Why can't Coppell be a test city for that? You know, maybe be on the west side of town where you see a little bit uh you know less residential traffic but you know why not Coppell? you know like uh, yeah, i i just don't see why we can't you know uh, lend ourselves to to help out and i think that that would that would uh you know lend Coppell to you know showing uh, the other people and the other uh cities in north texas that like look we're on the forefront of technology you know uh 
we, you know, if you want to bring your business here, I think it's a uh, it's a great way to show that we're looking for young, innovative uh, people who want to build their businesses here. And we've got a great school district, so obviously we support technology, you know, education and things like that. So it, to me, it just couples really well together. So you know, like autonomous cars would be an example of that. Uh, I, you know, I'd, I'd love to see. Uh, you know, I, I just love to see. You know, who knows? Maybe we can embrace solar by uh, some sort of partnership with. You know, we've got all those big warehouses that just have empty roofs. You know, <laughs> you know, why not? Why not put solar panels up there and take pressure off of our power grid? You know what I mean? So, you know, things like that. I, I would love to see. And those are a couple of ideas that were kind of thrown around. But I think a big thing is, um, you know, with those partnerships and you know, taking the data that's collected, and you know, let's learn. You know, let's try to let's try to learn how to be better citizens. You know, maybe we can be a little bit more conservative with the choices that we make. Uh, you know, uh, with our resources because you know they're finite. So I, I think we need to look to the future. We need to look uh, to help out our kids for that. Smart people, smart city. Thanks to our host <laughs> Neha. Special thanks to our guest, Mr. Nevels. Thank you all for joining us in the last episode of this Penny Podcast season. All links to the content talked about are provided below. Awesome.